Covering all of the Flint Bay region, NBC 25 News at 6 starts right now. And this just into the NBC 25 newsroom. Officers with the Flint Area Narcotics Group raided the Genesee Harvest Medical Marijuana Dispensary in Flint this afternoon. Our cameras were there and we saw officers taking items out of the business and a storage unit. We are told this is an ongoing investigation. Investigation. No further information will be released. And we'll follow up on the story and let you know when we have new information. New developments tonight about a suspicious situation at Delta College. According to Delta College Public Safety, a student athlete reported that she was followed from the main campus to her home just after 11 this morning. She described the alleged individual as a black male in his late 20s to early 30s, approximately 5'10", with a stocky build, wearing a black collar shirt. The student said the man was driving an older model, yellow, full-size passenger car with a green roof and Michigan plate starting with CLS. Now, the subject parked in front of the student's driveway and approached her asking for a ride. Without talking to the man, she left the area. Now, the man was last seen in the area of Euclid and Ionia Streets in Bay City. Anyone with information should contact Delta College Public Safety. What they actually hacked in my computer was a uh, dating link from Russia. The U.S. election isn't the only thing the Russians appear to be hacking. The Genesee County Clerk and Register says it's happened to him, too. John Gleason has access to all the election information in Genesee County. So he's concerned over an apparent email hack from Russia. NBC 25's Joel Fike joins us live from the County Administration Building with the story. Joel, what exactly happened? Gleason apparently was concerned about this email that was sent to a friend of his and included a link to a Russian uh, dating site. One big problem, Gleason never sent it. And when he opened it up, he noticed it was language that, well, quite frankly, we can't mention on television. But as we mentioned, Gleason was upset. He had it investigated. And he thinks that it may be a way for people to get to spend more money on that Russian dating site, or it could be something much more than that. Now, after the mayor's recall petitions are certified one way or another on Friday, Gleason says he's going to call together the county board, along with the sheriff, the state police, Homeland Security, all to show how vulnerable we all are to cyber mischief. Something well, what could happen next? I'm not, I'm not intelligent enough to know where this could lead, but I'm certain somebody is. Our IT department actually backed it, the link to Russia, um, but let's see what potential concerns are in front of this. The county's, uh, the head of the county's IT department, Chris Newell, says that while he's concerned, he admits it could be malware or just an ad, but Gleason feels he and other elected officials need to be protected. Now, for you at home, what happens to you if this something like this happens? Well, look on the email and look on the header, and if it looks suspicious to you, you and especially if there is an attachment, try to delete it without opening it. Live in Flint, Joel Fike, NBC 25 News. And we want to know, do you take steps to protect your computer from potential hackers? Head to our website, NBC25news.com, to answer. And you're taking a live look right there at Bay City. A little overcast. Some of you watching saw rain this afternoon. Some of you saw a lot of rain. Well, what will the evening be like, and when will the rain return? Chief Meteorologist Jamie Cagle joined us now with a look at your first ready storm ready forecast. Well, that is right. Some of us have the cloud cover overhead. Some of us are seeing peaks of sunshine. But all in all, we have the rain moving through this afternoon, and now things starting to wind down. Take a look at the satellite and the radar. Uh, relatively dry conditions across mid Michigan right now. Some heavy rainfall Wayne County Detroit area as they are under a severe thunderstorm warning at this time. But as far as we are concerned here in mid Michigan, very, very quiet with some breaks in the clouds. And as we take a look at the temperatures right now, temperatures are running through the 70s most everywhere. Some low 80s along the I-69 corridor and those dew points still stuck with some 60s right now. We will feel the humidity drop later this week and the temperatures staying pretty steady near 70 for the next couple of hours. We'll end up in those low and mid 60s overnight. Your storm ready weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes. 
People in Midland Bay, Gladwin and Isabella counties have been forking out a lot of cash to pay for cleanup after the historic flooding in late June. Today, President Donald Trump approved the disaster declaration for Michigan, freeing up federal assistance. NBC 25 Stephanie Parkinson is in Midland and Stephanie, this has to be welcome news for people who have been dealing with the flood damage. It's a relief that federal funding is now here. This was one of the hardest hit areas in Midland. To give you an idea of where we are, this is Gibson, just off Sturgeon Avenue in the northern part of the city of Midland. Where I'm standing was completely underwater with those floodwaters going about halfway up this driveway. The people who live in this home say nothing was covered by their insurance. Yeah, we had a couple of feet of water in our basement. Ann Shading and her husband have spent thousands of dollars cleaning up their basement. We'll All of it the, out of their uh, own uh, pockets uh, because they didn't lost, have flood insurance. You know, we lost our washer dryer and the hot water heater and we had a lot of damage done to our um, furnace and our, our dehumidifier we lost our dehumidifier and lots of stuff like stuff <laughs> that's the best way to say it we just lost a lot of stuff Stuff. FEMA says if people qualify, they can get up to $33,300. That's the cap. But what they look at is everything the insurance didn't cover. Many people have started rebuilding, but that doesn't mean that they can't apply for help from FEMA. If they've had any photographs, if they um, had to purchase different types of things, just save the receipts and, you know, just um, any type of samples they might have of carpeting or different things like that. You know, anything that would show the damage. In order to see if you qualify for any federal assistance, you do have to register with FEMA. You can do that over the phone or online. We have all of that information on our website, NBC25news.com. In Midland, Stephanie Parkinson, NBC25 News. The total damage to Midland, Isabella Bay and Gladwin counties is estimated at $100 million. Now for those who don't qualify for FEMA grants, there are also low interest loans available for both residents and businesses. This morning, Flint Bishop International Airport pulled off a big surprise for one of their employees. Maintenance worker Richard Krull thought he was coming to this conference room to fix something, but he was actually showing up for a surprise employee recognition gathering. Now, the airport wanted to thank him for his heroic efforts when he helped save Lieutenant Jeff Neville during the airport attack in June. Bishop says they are incredibly grateful. Congressman Dan Kildee, along with professionals with the Great Lakes Bay Health Centers, held a discussion on health care in Saginaw this morning. Now, they discussed how the proposed changes in health care will impact people in Michigan. Residents were able to talk to Kildee and health care professionals about their concerns with the changes to our health care system. In turn, Representative Kildee was able to share his own concerns. I think one of the things we have to do is strengthen the individual market, the people who purchase their health care on the exchange, those individuals who don't have either Medicaid or employer paid health care. We need to make sure that they can get affordable health insurance. The Great Lakes Bay Health Center is the second largest group of community health centers in Michigan. They operate at 26 locations across the Great Lakes Bay region. For news updates at your fingertips, download the NBC 25 News app. Stay connected while you are on the go. The Trump administration advising the Department of Justice to look into universities and their affirmative action policies. This coming after an internal document was leaked redirecting the resources of the department. NBC 25's Sarah Yeager spoke with colleges and universities across mid-Michigan. And Sarah, what did you find out? Well, affirmative action has been around for decades to ensure people are treated equally regardless of their race, color, creed, gender, or national origin. Recently, affirmative action has come under fire with eight states banning this type of admission policy. I spoke with representatives at both two-year and four-year institutions. None of them are concerned about the threat of possibly being sued by the Department of Justice based on their admission procedure. They all said they accept anyone, regardless of their race or even gender. Now, some universities do require their students to meet certain academic criteria in order to gain admission, while other colleges accept anyone as long as they're interested in their academic program. Well, at my community college, we have open enrollment, which we, means we will accept anyone for admissions. Um, you can have a developmental delay, or you can be the valedictorian of your high school class, and you're still eligible to apply here. I also reached out to the president of the Flint NAACP, who said the Justice Department is supposed to ensure those rights are not taken away and 
for them to do that within the department is very troubling. Now coming up on Fox 66 News at 10, we're hearing from local students about the diversity on mid-Michigan campuses. In the studio, Sarah Yeager, NBC 25 News. New grant money for Crime Stoppers from the Ruth Mott Foundation is giving the organization a boost. The more than $80,000 grant is focused on reducing and preventing crime in neighborhoods, specifically in Northeast Flint. A special project highlighting unsolved crimes will also be launched through the use of two billboards being placed in high traffic areas in order to reach the most people. This is really an educational campaign to try to get a specific area in North Flint, it's the northeast side of Flint, um, to understand what the Crime Stoppers program is and that they are the eyes and the ears in the community. The grant is also focused on increasing communication and building trust with police agencies. The Michigan Education Tour continues. Coming up on NBC 25 News at 6, U.S. Secretary of Education, she made her next stop in Holland today. Our political reporter, Nick Minot, talked to her about the tour and what she hopes to get out of it next. Much of our afternoon rain winding down for the evening, but we're not done with showers and thunderstorms quite yet when we talk about the rest of your work week. And we'll take a look at that upcoming weekend in your storm ready weather forecast. You're watching NBC 25 News at 6 with Dave Bondi, Sadie Hughes, and Chief Meteorologist Jamie Cagle. You're watching NBC 25 News at 6. Welcome back. Tonight, U.S. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos continues her education tour in her home state. As the leader of 4,000 employees in the U.S. Department of Education, DeVos is enforcing a hiring freeze and is now tasked with overseeing the implementation of the Every Student Su Succeeds Act. Our political reporter Nick Minock spoke one-on-one -on -one with the secretary in Holland this afternoon. As U.S. Secretary Betsy DeVos visited her hometown here in Michigan, I asked her about her plan for student loans, Common Core, and her thoughts about the White House's new chief of staff. Strawberries. And he was still hungry. Secretary DeVos is reading to kids in Holland, encouraging them to read during the summertime. It's great to be back here in West Michigan. And while we last saw one another at the White House, uh, here we are in a backdrop that was literally pretty much my backyard growing up. I had lots of fun playing in woods just like this behind my house. Her husband, Dick DeVos, made a special visit too. And one slice of watermelon. After visiting with students and parents at the DeGraff Nature Center, Center, the secretary and I spoke about the changes at the Department of Ed since I last spoke with her at the White House. So I read reports this week that you dropped your plans to reform the student loan service program. Why is that? Well, actually, it's a part of a process that is continuing to move toward better servicing for students and better um, responsiveness to taxpayer needs as well. It's, a, it's only a step in the process, but because of the federal procurement rules, it had to be a part of that process. So was it because you had some backlash because of Capitol Hill, some leaders there, some congressional leaders who came out against it? Actually, it, uh, it's a result of bringing on a really talented new individual to run FSA, and he's bringing some new methodologies and new approaches. He's been very successful in the private sector in a broad range of financial service activities. The day before her trip to Holland, DeVos encountered protest in Grand Rapids. I don't think she's really showing up to class. But DeVos says President Trump's administration is on the right path. All right, John Kelly, you served with him in the president's cabinet. He's now White House chief of staff. I was at the White House on Monday. It seems like he's made some significant changes so far. Do you think Mr. Kelly is a good fit for this White House, a good uh, perhaps change in course? I think very highly of General Kelly, and I think he's going to do a great job on behalf of the president and the administration. To watch our full interview, you can head to our website. And Holland, Nick Minock, NBC 25 News. Today kicked off the Cars 108 roof sit. All of the money raised go to the way, goes to the Whaley Children's Center. Cars 108 
Morning Show host Pat and AJ, along with the CEO of Whaley Children's Center, Mindy Prussia, will be live on the roof and they'll live there at the McDonald's on Saginaw Street in Grand Blanc for the next three days. Each day, there will be activities for community members and businesses to donate to the Flint-based charity. We have come to Whaley not because they've asked to or because of any fault of their own, so we do our best at Whaley to raise any funds to make it a little more homey for them and help them be kids again. On Friday, the three will come down from the roof to announce how much money has been raised. More than $13,000 was raised during last year's Cars 108 roof sit for Whaley Children's Center. Now, your certified NBC 25 storm ready forecast. Good evening, Mid Michigan. Well, earlier this afternoon, we saw a fair amount of intense downpours across our northern and central counties. And now the rain really beginning to wind down. Let's start with a look at Mount Pleasant through our Skynet camera. And as you can see, reporting clear skies. Looks as though we still have a little bit of high level cloud cover in the area. 70 degrees and that dew point still stuck in the mid 60s right now. West uh, northwest wind at around five miles an hour. And you can see how the rain has really weakened and beginning to dry up as we head into these uh, evening hours right now. Still some cloud cover aloft and you can see towards the Detroit area still some intense downpours there. But looking like uh, with the latest model data that things are going to continue to quiet for the next couple of hours. As we take a look right now, you can see there are some breaks in the cloud cover, uh, allowing for a little more heat or at least some temperatures to keep uh, stay in the 70s and even some 80s along the I-69 corridor. But to the north, that rain cooled air helping to quiet things down. And right into the area of Isabella Midland, Gladwin and Clare County, kind of the hot spot for the rainfall, upwards of an inch to almost an inch and a half reported as we take a look at the radar estimates. So some good rainfall in some areas. Another area low pressure over the high plains right now that is going to take aim at the Great Lakes region for tomorrow, bringing us more scattered rain for the area. But severe weather threat is looking like marginal to just general thunderstorms in the area. We'll find a little more intensity to our west and southwest to your future cast. And again, for the rest of the night, things looking pretty quiet across the area. Still some passing cloud cover overhead, mainly dry, and then starting out with some fog tomorrow morning. We'll get mostly cloudy skies for much of the day. Then by about 2 o'clock, maybe a few showers coming in. Closer to 4, we'll find a little more scattered rain moving in, and it continues to build into the evening and overnight hours. In fact, it's looking like it's going to favor some of the later evening and overnight hours for the best chance of showers and thunderstorms. And then for Friday, we have passing showers across the area and still under mostly cloudy skies. As far as the grill cast is concerned for tonight, it's looking pretty good over the next uh, couple of hours. Temperatures still in the 70s, though, as we get to the 9 o'clock hour. And as we take a look at the seven day forecast, we have one more day of scattered rain on Thursday morning showers on Friday as we get into the weekend looking pretty nice. Some passing showers possible on Sunday, Saturday looking really nice and then more scattered rain into next Monday. Overnight lows still taking a little bit of a dip along with those daytime highs. That's your storm ready weather forecast. And we want you to share your photos and videos with our burst gallery. These pretty pink day lilies. Ooh, those are beautiful. Our from Susan Evie in Flushing. Share your photos and videos with NBC 25. Download our news app and click on See It Sent It. Yeah, beautiful pictures right there. Here in the Mitten, many people depend on the Great Lakes for their way of life. Even the smallest creatures can have a big impact on keeping the lakes clean. Coming up on NBC 25 News at 6, groundbreaking research underway in mid-Michigan could hold the key to protecting the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes face threats from invasive species and chemicals. But an unexpected creature could hold the key to protecting our waterways from harm. NBC 25's Nick Russo explains what this animal is and why it's important. These native freshwater mussels act like the liver of the Great Lakes. The clams filter out harmful chemicals and bacteria to keep our water clean and safe. But researchers say 70% of these mussels are endangered or threatened. Researchers from Central Michigan University set up an experiment to replicate the life cycle between mussels and fish, just like you would find in the Great Lakes. These mussels filter out bacteria in the waters such as E. coli, but researchers don't know the impact the chemicals that might get into the waters, such as shampoo or pharmaceuticals, might have on the clams. 
we are studying something that nobody in North America knows the answer to yet. What we're considering is whether agricultural chemicals as well as urban chemicals are affecting our clams or our mussels that are found in our rivers and streams. This experiment will last a total of two years. Researchers hope their results will help protect these mussels in the future. Live in the studio, Nick Russo, NBC 25 News. Taking a live look at downtown Flint through our Skynet cam. Coming up, Jamie will have a look at your storm ready forecast and tell us when the rain will get here tomorrow. Tens of thousands of people from across the country are hoping to get hired by Amazon today. NBC Nightly News will have a look at the job fair and the broader state of the economy. I think I just heard thunder. Is that right? Uh, you're hearing it from Lapeer County. <laughs> Whoa. I've got <laughs> such good ears. I'm definitely hearing something else. <laughs> there is some rain right around Cotchville, Zilwaukee, and uh, Carrollton right now. As we take a look at Storm Ready Doppler radar, this is going to be just to the west of I-75, right along 675, and then into Lapeer County, into the northern and eastern parts there. We do have some uh, pretty good rainfall. We'll have an update to the forecast tonight at 10 and 11. Hopefully you won't have a busy night. Hopefully it all and it's been pretty quiet right now. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Catch us right back here at 11.